Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake of RoboBlake.com helping you create something awesome today. So today we're going to continue our conversation about the exposure triangle uh, with DSLR cameras and today we're going to be focusing on ISO. ISO is going to affect two things. It's going to affect the level of noise in your images, but it's also going to affect the level of sensitivity to light that your camera is interpreting. So what this means is that if you have a lower ISO number, like ISO 100, then as long as you have a well-lit situation overall, the image is going to be very crisp. It's not going to be noisy. It's going to be a very smooth image. But if you are in a low light situation where you need to bump up the ISO, once you start getting into over ISO 1600, just depending on your camera and how it handles noise, then that's going to be still what you might need in terms of how bright the image is, but you're going to notice grain the more you zoom in. Um, and just depending on the image in your camera, that could be very bad. And in some situations, it's more forgiving. I would say in black and white photos, it's okay. Or depending on the subject matter, it might be okay. It's always better to get the shot and it be a little noisy rather than get the shot and it be super dark. So if you have to choose between the two, if you have to get um, this once in a lifetime shot and you're worried about it being noisy, don't worry about it being noisy. Don't worry about it being grainy. Just get the shot and make sure it's well lit. In post, you always have the option of you know, converting it to black and white. There is some noise reduction software. Some of it's better than others. You don't really want to rely on noise reduction software, but if you have to, it is an option that is available to you. So how do we decide what ISO we should be using? Well, it depends on your overall situation, um, what kind of camera you have and how it handles ISO, but mostly the conditions that you're shooting in. If you're shooting mostly indoor, I recommend not going above ISO 1600 if you can help it with an entry-level DSLR camera like the Nikon D3100, D3200, 33 etc, etc. If you have something newer, like um, even at the entry level, like the Nikon D5500 can handle um, you know, higher ISOs and do tremendous quality. Uh, I've seen some amazing shots with that in high ISO conditions. Um, or if you have the higher end cameras, the Canon 5D Mark III, the Nikon uh, D810, those handle higher ISOs with a lot less noise and grain than the entry level. And that is why professional photographers swear by them because those guys shoot at high ISOs all the time, especially for sports photography where they have to use um, a lot higher ISO to compensate for the fact that they're using higher shutter speeds, usually in indoor situations like boxing events and so on. Um, so they're not going to be using flash. They're going to be using fast lenses and those fast shutter speeds. So that's why a high ISO without a lot of noise would be very important there. Now, me personally, I shoot ISO 1600 as my maximum because of the type of cameras that I have. Uh, but under the right conditions, I can shoot uh, 3200 as well if I'm shooting um, you know, with a off-camera flash or something like that and that's what I need to do, then that's absolutely what I will do in that situation. And it's come out uh, fine for me. I have some shots that have worked out like that. But in most situations, uh, especially with DSLR video, you don't want to go above 800 if you can avoid it. And that's just because of the level of noise and grain that's introduced is a lot more pronounced, in my opinion, in video, which is happening and things are moving and so on, versus a static media like photography. With photography, you can uh, go to higher ISOs and it'll be much more forgiving than if you do it in video. So I would stick to um, that situation there. Now, an example of using a lower ISO, when you're in perfect daylight, when you're in perfect daylight, when it's super sunny outside, you want to go to the lowest ISO possible because you don't need the camera to be sensitive to light because there's more than enough light coming in. But what if you've gone down to the lowest ISO you can, um, you you know cranked your camera up to like something like f16 so that you're at um you know that smaller aperture and you're shooting super fast as it is but the camera is still overexposed in those situations rare as they might be you need to look at getting something like an nd filter that you can put over the camera lens to um, cut a few stops of light out that's going to really help you nd filters the good ones are about 
$25 from like Hoya and Tiffin. I'll have links in the description below. They're like $15, $25. Don't get the cheap ones under $10 because it will mess up your auto focusing. You don't want that. Uh, you want your stuff to be tax sharp. So just go ahead and make sure you're getting the quality ND filters if you're gonna put a, a filter over your lens. But that's an example of a situation where adjusting the ISO, adjusting the shutter speed, adjusting the uh, aperture may not be able to help you and you'll need to go and take it a step further by just augmenting the situation with an ND filter. Well, I hope you guys understand ISO a little better and you understand how it plays a role in the overall exposure triangle with shutter speed and aperture. If you still have questions, leave those in the comment section. Don't forget that this is part of my series on the exposure triangle. So don't forget to check out those other videos in the playlist and also my overall video just talking about the exposure triangle in general. Anyway, like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome content on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching and don't forget, create something awesome today.